Welcome to the instructional video series on the adjustable hip square. This is segment six of a six part series in which we're going to deal with how to assemble all the pieces we've cut thus far. We're also going to show you how to calculate using the ratios that we include with the square, the length of your common and jack rafters as they abut both the wall lines to the hip and wall lines to the valley members. Um, we're going to cut away into the field to show you the assembly. Once all the skeletal members have been assembled, we're going to take the chart of ratios that's included with your square and show you how to calculate the length of the uh, common and jack rafter members and how it's used up close so that you can see firsthand how you can do all of this from the ground. Let's start with hip rafter A. We're going to take the hip rafters and join them along with the ridge member as you see in this small model. You will notice how the two faces come together and secured with number 16 nails from either side. Some care should be taken to ensure the complete immersion of the nails into the wood. Whether using a nail gun or hand drive nails, a slight angle in the nail approach is required. Then you'll notice as the ridge abuts the flat face of the hip rafters, you nail through the joint into the end of the ridge member. As the first valley, valley member B, meets the ridge, you'll see that it lays against the side with the small cut bevel flush with the end of the ridge member. Now, because I'm installing a dropped valley rafter, the top edge of the valley is lower than the ridge member. Uh, you can figure this out for yourself, as many of you already understand this. The center line of the valley continues to meet the center line of the ridge. The short hip member G is attached with the center line in line with the center line of the ridge member. It meets hip rafter C in the same way that we attach the first two hip rafters. We will repeat the same process on hip rafters D on this end of the building and attach the ridge member in the same way we did to the first ridge member. Valley rafter E attaches in the same fashion as valley rafter B and the last few members are inserted like so. You'll notice I have several vertical support members to stabilize the structure while the assembly is underway. Although the st structure itself is somewhat self-supporting, sections where the ridge is interrupted uh, on a short hip climbing to another ridge must be supported to hold the members at the proper angle and keep ridge members level. Now that all our skeletal members are installed, we can calculate, cut, and install our common rafters. With the square is included a formula chart on common rafters. This chart of numbers is a simple ratio that is multiplied by the distance to the hip member. For example, our first common rafter is six inches from the hip member, or this roof that we're demonstrating is constructed on a 612 pitch. If we look at our chart formula, it indicates a number of 1.118. If we multiply this times our six inch dimension, we now have a length of our first common rafter of 6.708 or uh, 8.385 on the opposite side. 